Precious from the Posh Academy. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you just how to make your own draping panels from bolts of fabric. This is a very cost-effective way if you want to, let's say, achieve premium draping, but you don't want to fork the cost of buying 20 and 30 um, panels at retail value. Use this mechanism or use this strategy so you can still provide amazing drapery for your clients without breaking the bank so you can increase your bottom line. Watch here. In today's lesson, we are going to be using three different blends of fabric. Um, one will be a pink flat bowl, which is a very translucent flat fabric. Uh, then we're going to be using an ivory crushed share or crushed bowl, which has a little bit more texture and it's a, uh, has more flexibility and it's easier to manage because if you mess up, it's kind of hard to, to find, to find the, um, the error. Then we're going to use a crushed taffeta. I like, you, I like mixing uh, different blends and different colors because it, it makes your draping look more premium and it kind of stands out from just a regular standard backdrop. So we're going to get into using those three items and we're going to be using pink, ivory, and a teal. That way you can see the different, um, the different ways that they handle with a sewing machine. So this here is everything I use um, when I am sewing my panels. I use standard Fisker scissors to cut because the bolt, the fabric comes on a, a roll, an entire bolt, so you have to measure and cut. I use push pins when I am creating my seam. I do use a push pin cushion that I actually leave on my wrist for easy access. Um, I use a seam ripper anytime I make a mistake, which is rarely, but I make them. So I use a seam ripper to cut that. These are my universal needles. These very standard needles. You don't need any specific needles unless you are getting into a more heavier fabric like a, a jacquard or something where you need um, a special needle for that but for your standard draping with your shear and your flats and your taffeta you can just use universal needles i use you also i use simple standard thread i don't get any specific thread anything special i do get the color exact same color of the panel though because you can in many instances especially when you have a flat you can see the the thread so you wouldn't want it to show up on you know different color i use this um, measuring tape for creating my seam. I want to make sure that my seam is four inches wide. So I actually will measure out five inches because I want uh, uh, the tuck in my edge. So I'll use this for that. And I use a standard arm. Nothing spectacular. Just a regular old cheap sunbeam will get the trick done. These are my bobbins. Um, I do like you to use the cheap ones, which is the plastic ones, because they haven't really, they've never given me a problem. When you go to using these, if your machine doesn't call for this exact kind of metal bobbin, I would not suggest you to use them because all of the drill, the slotted uh, drill holes can sometimes make you, it'll trip up your machine. So just to be on the safe side, stick with the old cheapies because they have never given me a problem. And that is all, that is all the uh, materials I use. This is the actual sewing machine I use. It's the Singer Confidence. I purchased this from Walmart. It was about $200. Some of the reasons I upgraded to this machine is because I really love the arm that is used here. It helps leverage my fabric because without the arm, uh, it's a lot of tussling and having to maneuver the fabric for it to stay on top of the table. Um, I also like the feature because it has time speeds that you can adjust. Uh, you can make it go really, really fast, or you could turn it all the way down to make it go really, really slow. That is normally if you just get into just getting into sewing, and you are not you not sure of how to control the pressure foot, or you know sometimes when you go press down too fast, you end up making a lot of errors. So I like that feature. I love all of the touch buttons, and I love the digital features that tell me exactly what what my stitch is doing. Um, I normally keep it on the basic settings. I hardly ever really touch these settings because it's standard for a straight stitch. And it's just been working really, really well for me. I really love it. It also has the feature that you can use if you don't wanna use the pressure foot and you want to just use freehand. You can push the button and make it go by itself without you having to press 
press the pressure foot. Um, but I have used a standard sewing machine for many, many years and haven't had any trouble with using that. I just wanted to upgrade to give me more features now that I'm sewing a lot more often. So right here, I want you guys to realize um, the material I'm using as my base at the workstation. This uh, fabric here is actually felt and this is actually velvet. I use this as my base for my workstation because when you're using uh, sheer fabrics and you're having it on a table, it tends to slide all around. So if you don't have any weights or anything to hold it down, uh, it'll really slide. But when you use some kind of textured fabric such as felt or velvet or maybe a poly blend, you, it'll hold your fabric in place and you don't have to really fight with it. So if you can, just get some really, you know, you can get cheap fabric from Walmart. You can get it from Joann's. It don't have to be anything specific. You just need something that's going to hold your fabric down. So normally with most companies, when you're dealing with wholesale companies and they, you're getting bulks of fabric, it normally comes on the entire roll, such as this. Uh, some companies, most retail companies, when you buy bulks, uh, they will may have it folded up and in a bag, like really, really, really tight and you'll get it like in a bundle that way. But for the most part, if you're getting bolts of fabric, it normally would come in a roll just like this that you would see in the fabric store. This is the crushed um, bowl that I was telling you guys about. This right here alone is 62 yards. Normally when you get a bolt, it's 120 yards, but it really varies depending on the fabric. But this in a bolt comes 120 yards. They normally would divide it up into two bolts. So this one would be 62 and then I had another one that was 62. You normally get a little extra because sometimes the cuts aren't always accurate. So they would normally uh, give you a couple of extra yards uh, at, at their cost. So um, I'm never complaining about that. But this is how it would come. So we're gonna deal with the ivory, the pink, and the teal. And right now we're gonna get into cutting, how I measure and cut. So this is a simple strategy I use when I am measuring out my fabric. I know the length of my foyer from opening end to opening end of the dining area is 12 to 13 feet uh, long. So I normally measure mine out to 12 and a half feet because I am making 12 foot panels. I primarily use 12 foot panels all the time. Um, I do have other sizes, but with all of my basic uh, pipe and drape I normally would use 12 feet and this is an easy way and an easy strategy that I use for measuring it out I also use the app in my phone called air measure and I would just um, if I wasn't using the foyer or something else I would just measure out from one end then walk it all the way down to 12 and a half feet then that would be my stopping point and I would just present two markers there maybe if it's a chair or any kind of strategies just as long as you I figure out where 12 and a half feet is just keep lapping your fabric back and forth until it's all gone off the bolt and then you'll make your cuts along each end and voila you got your panels all ready to be sewed and, and prepped measured out to the be to be the um, length you desire now you just cut you go to each end and you cut all of your um, folds along your along the, the fold so you can have a complete panel so I'm just going to grab the first one here go right there in the middle of the fold and go all the way across Just like that for each individual one. Okay, so once you finish cutting all of your panels, now it's time to start pinning them and ironing so you can get a crease that'll help you sew along your stitch a lot better or sew a stitch in there a lot easier. So, 
You want to take your measuring tape. I always measure out to five inches because that I want my inseam to be four inches. And then the fifth inch gives me uh, where I'm going to tuck the inseam so it looks like it's commercial grade, right? So measure to five inches. That's where you're going to fold over. And you just start pinning. I really don't. I can. I'm good at eyeballing five inches because I know uh, technically how I want, how wide I want my inseam to be. But for the sake of you guys doing it the right way, um, four inches is standard. So you want to measure five so you can get your fold a nice even fold underneath. Now, an easy rule of uh, easy method would be start from the middle, which would be your crease, because you always would have a crease in the middle of your uh, fabric which is where your fold initially was, and pin there first. Create your fold and pin. This is the flat um, shear, so it's a little, it's not as easy to manipulate like the crushed is, so just be really careful. When you pin, you wanna go down and then back up. Just like that. You can use any kind of flat pin, push pins. Um, I use the ones with the balls on the end because they're easy to see and they're easier to pick up. You can use the flat ones and the flat ones are good to use if you don't remove your pin while you're threading. But I like using the balls because they're easier to see. I normally would lose them and maybe step on them or something and that isn't good. So fold along the entire panel. I normally go about every about every 10 inches or so. Anywhere between 8 to 10 inches is a good is a good measure. And just pin like such. All the way till you get to the end. I normally use an 8 foot cable um, because it's it, it's a, it gives me more um, workspace and I don't have to shift my fabric around a whole, whole lot. But if you have maybe two six foot tables, that'll be perfect. But the way I normally would set my workstation up is as you see here, I would have, this is my iron in section and then adjacent to this is where I would sew. So I kind of keep everything in the same area. Okay, pinning is complete for the one half of my panel. One thing about pinning, um, let me give you some light so you can see. Okay. So now you can see my fold is even all the way across. Uh, and one thing about pinning, the good thing I like about that is no matter what happens to your fabric, you won't lose, uh, you won't lose your measurements because it's, it's pinned, right? So now you could ball it up if you want to save, save the uh, second half or the sewing portion for another day. You could put it in the corner, do what you want to do because it's not going to go anywhere. So now we just want to pin the second half. Same way we did the first half. About every eight inches or so. And you also want to make sure all of your pins are facing left because this is the way you're going to feed it into the sewing machine. If you have them going the other way, it's really, it's going to create a little chaos when you go to sew and you're not going to be able to easily remove your pins. So make sure they're all facing the same direction for one and make sure they're facing left. There we go. It's all pinned. All the way to the end. So, that is all pinned.
like I said, I could do anything with this and nothing is going to happen. When I lay it back flat on the table, it's going to take the shape that I pinned, I originally pinned it to do. Um, so this for now you can put away because we won't be doing any more measurements. Now it's time to iron. Definitely keep your iron on, if not the lowest setting, as close to the lowest setting as possible because you don't want to, um, you don't want to burn your fabric, especially as fabric as delicate as this. So I normally would lay it out across the entire table and just run the iron smoothly across. I have my iron set on two. And like I said, this isn't no fancy iron. This is a Sunbeam, maybe a dollar store. I don't remember because I don't iron. <laughs> but that's it. So you want to you want to create you creating two um, creases here. You're creating a crease uh, along the top, and you are creating your seam crease, which is right along where your pins are. This is real real. It's, I would say it's real critical because it just ensures that you have a, a neat stitch. When I used to kind of skip this step in, before, um, just, you know, trying to take shortcuts, it, I, I noticed that my um, panels, they, they just, they didn't look, they couldn't possibly pass for being purchased from the store. So, and then they were like really uneven and it just was, it just was a mess. So this is sometimes time consuming a little bit, but it is so worth it because your, your end result is really nice and uniform and polished. And another thing, once you arm your, your creases, that's another, it's like another benefit because it's like you can do anything with it. It, it won't, it won't lose its shape. And just to give you a little insider tip for you guys that may be a little more advanced with a sewing machine, I don't use pins, honestly. I don't. I normally would just sit here, create my folds, and I would just arm right away. I don't take my time to create, put pins in and all that stuff. Because, like I said, once you iron your creases, your fabric is pretty much set. The stitch it, or the threading is what locks it in place. And that's it. That is now sewed. It's all tightly creased. No matter, you know, I don't have to handle this real delicate because nothing is gonna to happen to it. It's not gonna go anywhere. So now I'm gonna show you how to do it with the crush fabric. So this I'm going to show you, this is the crush. It's not as, I mean it's still transparent, but it's not as transparent as the flush, uh, as the flat. It gives you a little more texture and it just gives a more uh, premium look. It makes the, the backdrops look like they are uh, have higher quality because they did. So, for this one, I'm going to show you how I do it without the pins. The easy way. Just eyeballing. Again, I still run my fabric along the table. I still would like to work from my middle out. That would ensure that it's even across this half and then I do the opposite on the other half. So I'm not using the measuring tape. I'm not using any of that stuff. I'm freehanding, if that's a word. <laughs> I'm doing this thing freehand. That sounds better. So I go line my creases up. I know I want my inseam about four inches relatively and I know I want my fold about an inch. So that is what I'll do there. Grab my little sunbeam and then I iron. With the crush fabric, I don't press my iron on any one spot too long because it can tend to take your wrinkles out and this fabric is intended to have wrinkles. So, that's my first one. And then I just kind of keep on going that way. 
get my crease up top. And again, I don't need the pins because once I have the creases, they will they still stay in place. And I could just run it through the machine real easily. Crease up top, crease down the bottom. Even as it lifts, that that still doesn't matter because when you feed it in the machine, you can just you'll see how I feed it in the machine and it just still runs right through so easily. So I don't have to sit there, put in pins, and then remove them. And as you guys do this, you will develop your own shortcuts. If you have discovered any new ones, please comment because <laughs> I always love shortcuts. So when I get to the very end, it still should even up. My edging still should even up from top to bottom like it does. And I'm all set. That one half is done. Like I said, even if no, even though no pins are in this fabric, I still am not concerned about losing uh, the fold that I just made because the crease is going to bring it right back. So then I just do what I did on the first half or the second half. Start from the middle. Roll it right on down. It's just that simple. Again, your edging should be even from top to bottom. If that's the case, you're set. You're ready to go to the sewing machine. Voila! This we have your taffeta, which is, um, this is crushed taffeta. I really, really love this fabric. Um, one of the reasons I love it is because it's extra wide. It is nine and a half feet wide. Um, so anytime I can get this on sale, I snatch it up. This is a teal color. This doesn't have a front and back like some fabrics, so no matter which side you work on, it, it doesn't matter. Um, both sides are the same thing. So with this, I'm going to do the same thing I just did. Going to create my seam from the middle. it's even. Line my creases up like such. And then get to ironing. This, since it's a, a heavier fabric, it's not as delicate. So normally when you go ahead and do a fold, it will kind of stay in place without you having to physically leave your hand laying down on it. Um, so that's another reason why I love, it's just so easy to manage, it really is. So I could just go ahead and create a fold, just like that. And create a fold. So those of you that, you know, may be new to sewing, you can use the pins until you're, you know, comfortable that you can eyeball your seam. But notice I am not using any pins. And I would just sew. All the way to the middle. And 
and again don't keep your fabric um, don't keep your iron pressed down for too long because it will remove the wrinkles and this kind of fabric is intended to be wrinkled and that is one of the reasons why it's so beautiful then just move that on down continue on to your other half is the very last part. And voila! That is all of the prep work for ironing whether you pin or whether you do freehand, um, that's it. And again, this fabric is the same thing. I don't have to worry about, you know, the folds coming out or any of that stuff because once I get set up to the sewing machine here, I'll just still go ahead and create, recreate the folds right where the creases are, run it right through, and voila! So now I'm going to show you how to thread your bobbin. I'm going to be threading the the metal one, the one I recommended you guys not to use, but just for purposes, if it does trip up, I want to be able to show you exactly what I mean. So for the other two, I will be re I'll use the plastic ones, which is the ones I highly recommend. But for the sake of this video, I'll give you a little added flavor. So you want to re remove this, which is what secures your thread. Put your thread on the spindle. Replace that, then you're going to take your thread, loop it through here, which would say number one. On most standard um, machines, it's, it's the same thing. It'll say number one. So you want to loop it through there. Then you want to come around this loop, and it'll tell you. It'll have the figure configurations right here on the sewing machine. Go around that, but be, be it, got, it has grooves, so be sure to... Uh, put your thread through the groove and then you're going to put your bobbin on top of this shaft you're going to have to slide your bobbin back like so and your pressure foot for the sake of you seeing it on the video I have it up here on the table you're going to gently press your pressure foot oh turning it on may help <laughs> So power your baby up, then gently press on your presser foot. Now I have my speed set low, so I'm going to speed it up. I'm not going to fill this whole bobbin up with teal because I this is not a color I use often. I normally just put enough on there that I need for whatever my assignment is. So then, but if you are trying to fill your bobbin up, you just continuously press on the pressure foot and it will stop on its own. It'll stop. It'll let you know that it's full. Um, so at this point, you just take it off. And you bring it down to the side of the sewing machine and you use the little blade there to cut the access also whatever access is hanging um, is hanging through your through the top hole you want to get rid of that because sometimes that can get caught up in your uh, in your machine as well and it'll throw your pattern it'll throw your whole stitch off so now you have threaded your bobbin. You want to put it in the housing. 
You want to make sure your bobbin is all, I mean, your thread is always facing left, meaning counterclockwise is how it, your thread should be. Just insert it in there. Now your thread is facing left, but you want to put it under this groove. It's a little groove here and then extend it out, extend it out like that. Then you want to replace your cover. And now you're going to thread your needle. So remove it from around the groove because that's only you're only using this when you're threading your bobbin. And you want to replace, uh, make sure your the shaft is in the upward position because if it's back against this holder, it's going is you're going to be not threading. You're not you're not not going to be stitching. You're going to be using the bobbin. So make sure you put that back where it goes. And this I always, is each sewing machine will have the figuration on the sewing machine, tell you exactly how to do it. So you still wanna go under the groove for number one, which is up here. Then you wanna go around, I say around the corner for number two. Then you wanna go downtown for number three. Then you wanna go back uptown for number four. Then you wanna go around the corner for number five and downtown again for number six. Now at this point, your thread should just be loose hanging, just loosely hanging. Um, now I am going to adjust the camera so you can see the actual threading of the needle. You're going to, it's a little lever here. You want to push down on that. Go up under the little hoop. Push down on the left, wait a minute. Okay, you want to go up under the little hoop. Push down on the lever. And voila. Your needle is threaded. At this point, I normally just take either a push pin or my finger or something just to pull it out but it's threaded I used to fight with this thing so much trying to do it manually put do by myself oh my goodness it used to drive me nuts until I discovered that that is what that lever is for so now you're ready to uh, connect your threads so you're going to um, rotate your dial manually counterclockwise just so it can go down to pick up the thread and once it raises back up, that's it. Then again, you take some, some little pointy pin and pull your fabric through. I mean, I keep saying fabric, your thread through. Wait a minute. There it is. So even though you are supposed to have some excess thread um, hanging out so you don't lose your stitch. You don't want to have too much. So I normally, with a good rule of thumb that I use, is about six inches. Anything more than six inches, I just cut off with the little blade right there. And that's it. That is how you set up your sewing machine and uh, get prepared to sew. Now, once you turn it on, I always use my basic settings. For a, for a straight stitch. Some other things to consider would be the settings on your system. Uh, whatever sewing machine you're using, definitely you want to have the settings on basic settings for a straight stitch. A good a measuring uh, for your stitches would be 2.5. That gives you about 10 stitches um, per inch, which is a good standard. And then you want to also make sure your needle is set to the middle if you're not trying to cl uh, um, sew close to an edge. So make sure your needle is in the middle. And then you want to also pay attention to your tension. Your tension is really key as well because that is what causes, uh, your tension is here. That is what causes loose threads. That's what causes tight threads. That's what causes your needle to break. A lot of times when you fall into some kind of stitch problems, it's your tension. It could be your tension or somewhere along
the round the corner downtown uptown thing I was telling you guys about somewhere along there you didn't do something right so always the first thing I would do is look at my tension and then I always would check my bobbin to make sure thread is in there to make sure the thread isn't all jammed up and then I would take out my thread from up the top and I would redo it just to make sure I connected everything um, so they are basic settings for your sewing machine now to show you how um, I sew with the pins in. Um, either way is totally fine, it's personal choice. I choose not to use the pins because I think it's just an uh, extra step that takes unnecessary time. So for the sake of you being able to choose for yourself, I'll show you how to use the pins. Now I do use, let me adjust the light. I do use the pins uh, with the balls on the end, like I said, because I can see them and it's better for me to grab them. If you use the flat pins that does not have the ball at the end, the benefit of using those is you normally, when you um, see like this one, if it's placed enough over to the right, you normally can run it straight through the machine without moving the pins. You don't have to take them out. So if it's, it's like this one, so I'm going to show you it. But this one, I don't, um, I'm going to run it through. So that one, if you pin it and the pin is over to the right far enough, you don't have to move them as you, as you sew because it'll just bypass the feeder. If it's not, you have to move it because it won't be able to slide through the feeder. Um, so I'm going to show you in, in this example. Let me penetrate my fabric. Put my lever down. Okay, so this is the flat. You see how this is flat. And of course I ironed it, um, that's why the creasing is there. And then I pinned it. So I'll run with the stitch, a couple stitches, one, two, three, then go reverse, then go back forward. This is, it is not as easy to manipulate, so I do try and take my time a little more with flat. I don't really go this low, but just for the sake of showing you. I went right past that pin. Let me show you how I go through this pin. You can sew going right past the pin. See that? And I didn't have to move the, remove the pin. So you can do that. Another thing I do to increase my um, make it go faster is I can increase my stitching. Ne before I was doing you on 2.5, which was about two stitches, I mean 10 stitches per inch. So now I'm gonna go up and make the stitches a little bigger so they won't be as tight. So I'm not sure if you can see the difference, but it um, makes the, the stitches wider and it, it serves more, it, Stitches fabric, more fabric that way. So it kind of saves a little bit of time. So you can, you can stitch right past your pins, but I, I normally take mine out as, I appro as it approaches. like this one, I would just take it out, keep on feet in my fabric, and voila. There's another. I'm at the halfway mark. I've just seen my crease. Pin. So the key with flat fabric is just being sure that it is flat because normally when you have buckles with this fabric, you will be able to see it. It shows up. Pen. Pen. And 
you see how I have to, you don't have to stop, but just to be sure that my fabric is still flat, I'll rather just stop to take the pin out. Okay. And voila. Okay. And I'll just take the last one out. And my, my edging is perfect. It's flat. Perfect to the T. And just let it go. When you get to the end, do about three backwards, and that's it. Lift up your lever. Pull your fabric on through. Cut it. And voila! There is your stitch. Neat seam, just like that. Okay, so here is the ivory. Um, again, this is fabric that I did not pin. I only ironed. So I have to go in and locate my folds and prepare my fabric again. So. I'll find my first fold and my second fold and just set it up once it's in there I'll just kind of eyeball my fabric to make sure that it still lines up correctly and this is crush this is a crush uh, shear, so it has, you know, a little more flexibility than the flat. Meaning if I make an error, it's no big deal. You're not really going to see it. Um, so I put it directly under the needle and release my feeder. And then I start. Then I go in reverse, a couple stitches, then go forward. So notice here is where I'm keeping an eye on my fabric to make sure it's lined up correctly. Just feed it in. So this is the benefit of ironing because if not, I would one, have to either use pins or I would have to keep my hand on it like that. When you iron, you don't have to do that. So if nothing else, I hope you guys definitely iron your panels. So normally if you have a buckle, uh, any kind of buckle or anything, you're fine because it's crushed so you won't really see it. Just keep on feeding the fabric up. That is my halfway mark. The, again, I, like I said, I'll see my crease as it go all the way down and make sure it lines up with the crease on the opposite end. And that lets me know that I measured, I'm on point. And I'll just keep on rolling. that by 
by maneuvering your fabric. getting towards the end so this is where I would measure up my edging just to be sure that it's all even and let it go When you get to the end, you'll do a little reverse stitch, and that's it. Voila. Use the blade to cut off your excess. And there is your panel. All sewed. Now off to the next panel. Okay, so now we are going to sew the teal panel. Um, and this is another uh, one of the benefits of having texturized fabric is it holds the fabric if this was just a, a plain uh, six-foot table it would this the fabric would slide all over the place I used to have to put bottles of dish detergent bleach all anything that was heavy to keep the fabric in place it used to drive me nuts so now I use uh, felt or I'll use velvet, anything that would keep the fabric secure and in place. So I would just stretch the fabric out along the, the, the length of the table. And then this one, remember, doesn't have any pins. Only thing I did was so uh, the only thing I did was iron uh, for the crease. So let me show you exactly how I just feed it into the machine and let it rip. Okay, so this was the teal fabric. This was the one that didn't have any pins. Only thing I did was iron the creases where I wanted them to be. So only thing you would do is just find the crease where you iron and fold it, and then find the seam where you iron that as well and fold it. Then you would put it under directly under your needle and let your feeder down. You would turn your dial manually with your uh, hand, manually, counterclockwise, so it could go down and penetrate the fabric. And then you would just gradually, slowly start to run the machine. As the machine runs, I always look down at my fabric to just kind of make sure it's lined up all neat. And also, when you are sewing... Um, and to ensure that your, your seam is even or your stitches are even, I always look at the end of my seam and I line it up with the edge of the feeder. That lets me know that my, my um, stitches aren't going to be crooked like going this way and that way. So that is a good rule of thumb to, to use. Uh, just line the edge of your seam, line it up with the edge of the feeder. And here we go. After about your first two or three stitches, you want to go in reverse because this would also secure the beginning of your stitch. Um, and you would do it at the beginning and at the end. So when you get to like maybe two or three stitches, you push your reverse button and then you go back about, I normally go about five stitches. I don't count them, but just go back just a little bit to secure your stitch. So I'm going to go forward, then backwards, then go forward again and then it's ready to sew. Now I have mine on, I told you mine's have a speed button, so I have it on slow just so you can see how it's just moving along. It's just moving along and I am keeping my edge along the edge of the feeder. Now I'll speed it up just so you can see. And I also, like I said, I also keep moving your fab fabric up and I also make sure that my the seams that I created, only with an iron, no pins, are in uniform. Like they're in position to be sold that way. So I'm going to speed it up. And there we go. 
And at this point, you're just guiding it with your hand. Watch it, so just to make sure your fabric is all even. I wouldn't, especially if you're in like a beginning phase, I wouldn't suggest you turn away and look at the news, but you can once you become more comfortable. But yep, just feed it on through. So once you get to the middle, which is where you'll see that deep crease along the, the, the length of your fabric, is a good way to um, determine if you're doing, you know, doing if your stitch is even. Because once you get to the middle, like so, your crease should be lined up on this portion as well as this portion. If it isn't lined up somewhere along the line, you messed up. Um, but normally if errors happen, you can, you normally can find them right away. And that's when you would pop them with your, your stitch, um, your thread uh, popper. Okay, so... So that means I'm halfway done. Once I see this, I'm all, I know I'm halfway complete one panel. Then I just keep on going. Make sure my creases are still all lined up. And another good thing with crushed fabric, even if you make a mistake, it's like so hard to see it that it is, you kind of can just keep on going. You really can. to the end. Just double checking my work. Make sure your excess doesn't bunch up. And voila. to the end. So once it get to the end, I just always, before I get all the way to the end, just double check to make sure my edging is all even. Um, Cause it, normally when you get to the end, you kind of just let it rip. Not the fabric, you just kind of let the machine go and do its thing. I told you guys okay so look at this now I've been sewing all day now I told you when I normally if I use this metal um, if I use this metal uh, bo bobbin this is the error that happens a lot error so now this means I have to take take my fabric off and cut the fabric cut the stitch and then re pick up where I left off fix the problem then pick up where I left off so normally when this happens, um, you, you kind of got to do the whole bobbin thing all over again. So I'm glad that that happened because that was the reason why I used that um, bobbin, just to show you guys. I'm glad that my needle didn't pop. But so in that instance, I would lift up my, prep, lift up my feeder. You got to be careful when you pull out your... Uh, be careful when you pull out your fabric because it can rip. So this is like really tight. So now I got to get scissors. Okay, so when that happens, you have to 
uh, pick up your feeder. Pick up the feeder and remove your fabric. And this is when this little handy dandy tool come come in play because you have to cut out the damaged area. So then you would just look at your fabric on the, the side that's going to show and check for any kind of loose, um, you know, any kind of loose stitches or anything that needs to be removed because you want to pick back up where you left off. And then you do the same thing on this side. Make sure you have a clean stitch. Then you go and find out what happened to your bobbin. In this instance, I don't know really what happened to the bobbin, but I told you it's just a common issue with these things. I, it really is. And it makes me want to just start a new one because I don't think it's going to act right. I really don't. Okay, so in that instance, uh, it is it happens often, which is why I don't use these, but I wanted to use it in hopes that it would happen so you guys can see exactly what I was referencing to, and it did. It happened. So what I did was uh, uh, created me a new bobbin, one of my little cheap favorite ones. I put a little thread on that. So I'm going to continue where I left off with this one. So I would just put it in there. Get my thread like such so you guys can see. Replace my cover and now I'm ready to pick up where I left off. So, once you make sure that both sides of your fabric is clean, okay, there we go, it's clean, you, bitch, you just pick up where you left off. But you go back maybe an inch just to reinforce you know, where you messed up and you cut off any excess thread. And then when you're done, you got to go back and cut off the access thread where you started at again. So, I'll manually uh, roll my, my dial counterclockwise just to go down and penetrate my fabric. And pick up where I left off. Then go back. Then go back forward. And we're back in business. a little bit then just make sure sometimes you the, the edging on some of your fabric it is um, it can be they try and make it go inward to create a seam like an you know a, a makeshift seam it's up to you if you want to keep it like that or if you want to open it up and continue your um, stitch that way since this one is so clean cut and is all the way down to the to the end of the fabric I'm going to leave it like that but normally I don't. I normally leave my seam, the serge in. I, I just no, leave it flat, completely flat, flat. I don't tuck it in. But since this one is already prepared that way, I'll just leave it that way. Go reverse, and that's it. Manually pick up, and voila, I've got, there we go. Cut my fabric with the little blade and that's it so you can see the how clean this wait a minute adjust the light the brightness so you can see how clean the stitch is it's completely flat it's completely neat um yeah so i don't have to worry about if i have a team or anyone i don't have to worry about having you know, homemade looking fabric and stitches that's just embarrassing and look like I didn't care. So that's that. That is the teal crush fabric. So guys, I, that wraps up today's tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope from this point on you are able to go out there, purchase your bolts, purchase your fabric and make you some amazing panels and make sure you get enough because premium draping is not just a simple 
couple of drapes. You really need a lot of drapes to obtain premium drapes. And so you can charge premium prices, right? So today's tutorial, um, we talked about various different kinds of fabric. We talked about um, different mechanisms for the sewing machine, different kinds of sewing machines. You can start with a basic sewing machine. It will get the job done. We talked about thread. We talked about the bobbins. Stay away from the metal bobbins, please. Um, I showed you an actual error. I'm glad that that helps so you can see um, how to go back and fix it if it ever happens to you. We also talked about how to cut your panels, something that you should um, use some kind of guide. Maybe you can use two chairs once you measure it out. Um, another great app to use would be Air Measure that is on, available on um, iPhone as well as Google Play, um, Android. Also, ironing, be, that's like key. Key part is ironing. Ironing your panels wherever you want the folds to be. Standard inseams are four inches. So you're gonna, your overlap should be five inches. Remember, because you're gonna fold twice. Um, also, how to start your base, have a good base with maybe some felt or some kind of velvet. Otherwise, your fabric is going to shimmy, shimmy all around and it's gonna drop your little nuts. So get you some kind of um, texturized fabric that'll keep your um, satins and your voles and all of that other fabric in place. That'll keep it really, really simple for you. I showed you how to sew with pins and without pins. Either way works for you is completely fine. Um, also, one of the added benefits of uh, updating your machine is being able to do hands-free, meaning you don't have to use the pressure foot. You can adjust uh, the settings from slow to fast. Um, so if you're just starting out, going all the way down to the slow, slowest, uh, slowest setting is a plus because it's almost like foolproof. Um, also, the iron settings. Make sure that is on the lowest setting because you don't want to iron and you burn your fabric, right? So don't do that. And uh, this tool, as far as the seam ripper, this is really handy dandy. I know a lot of things, if you get like a sewing kit, there's so much stuff that comes in those kits, but I showed you everything I use um, from start to finish when it comes to draping my, making my drapes. So that concludes today's workshop. This workshop also is paired amazingly with another cheat sheet. The cheat sheet compares um, a wholesale company uh, along with a retail company. It compares the pricing. It comp and this is using the same exact fabric, the same amount of fabric. And it's a configuration to show you how you can uh, save 360 some dollars for your, for your fabric. So go and get your bolts. If you want the cheat sheet, click the link. The link is below this video somewhere. The sh uh, cheat sheet is available in the Posh Shop along with other tutorials if there's other things you want to learn. And if you're really ready to take it to another level and scale your business, you might as well take the whole draping workshop. There's so many tips in that workshop, it's ridiculous. Like I really, anything I can thought of, I thought of, I put in the workshop. Also anything, any mishaps that happened while I was, um, you know, ex scaling my business with draping and incorporating from draping and everything I learned in between, it's in the workshop. So if you're ready to do that and level up, and get your return on your investment immediately with your first client, click that link below. I'm out, guys. Have an amazing day. Have an amazing week. Have an amazing quarter in your business. Let's scale up.